Hello students, in this session we will start with the endocrine system. Uh, endocrine system it has around uh, 4 hours of lecture. So we will try to balance between each lectures and each lecture will be around 50 minutes and I hope you will be able to follow with all the 50 minutes lecture. Okay, so we will start. Uh, there are many systems in um, part A you would have studied about uh, Mm, uh, nervous system, uh, skeletal system, muscular system and other stuffs and the introduction part and in anatomy B we will start with the endocrine system this uh, uh, will this session will go for four hours and uh, we will discuss about the various objectives now uh, if you look at this uh, objective the there are uh, we will study about this uh, hormone chemical structure we will study about the hypothalamus and other endocrine glands okay so uh, in hormone chemical structure you will know like how the hormones acting okay so what is the target organs then how this uh, endocrines are able to produce the hormones and release them into the bloodstream okay then uh, you will also study about the various receptors on the cells that attracts this hormone and sends these hormones inside the cell okay likewise you know the hypothalamus which is uh, about the midbrain uh, this part is uh, the main uh, part for uh, whole endocrine system i will tell you the anatomical importance as well as physiological importance and also uh, we will be discussing about the other endocrine glands we will be discussing about other endocrine glands okay so coming to the endocrine system uh, the endocrine system together with the central and autonomic nervous system form the great coordinating system which regulates body functions that means what between the body and the nervous system this endocrine system is a bridge okay so the nerves control the body through the endocrine hormones this is what you have to understand okay so in that there are many ways like uh, uh, as i told you there are many endocrine glands okay there are many endocrine glands you have you will be knowing about the locations as well as the physiological aspect okay so uh, basically if you see once a hormone is recognized by its receptor it exerts its biological action that is equal to signal transduction cascade this is what the basic thing signal transduction cascade so you know uh, there is something called hormone that is released by the glands endocrine glands these hormones once it is released it mix with the blood and in the blood you know the blood is circulating the complete uh, five liters of blood in your body is circulating every minute in your through the heart okay so through this uh, circulatory passage the endocrine uh, hormones also keeps spreading it keeps spreading so in this way it is reaching different areas okay it is reaching different areas and uh, yeah, there are cell receptors i will show you in the further slides okay okay so uh, the signal transduction cascade that is the response of the hormone that is released by the endocrine gland can occur within a second or it can take hours or days okay for example uh, within a second for example you see a snake under your leg when you sit in your uh, when you are sitting in the chair you sick you see a snake under your leg and immediately you will get lot of energy and you will just jump away from the place okay this is called as fight flight and fright response okay this response is taking place immediately when the adrenaline is released okay so that's what the hormone tra signal transduction cascade that is the response of the hormone is taking place within a second then for example aldosterone uh, and sodium retention sodium retention is the uh, aldosterone it is acting on the kidney to uh, withhold the sodium it should not uh, send all the sodium outside okay the required sodium should be uh, withhold withheld during the time of urine formation 
okay then growth hormones you know the growth hormones that is released in the blood stream it keeps supporting the bone cells muscle cells and it takes more days okay it takes more days and that's how the protein protein synthesis is taking place this is what you have to understand then feedback mechanism control the secretion response of the hormones you know in homeostasis you would have studied about the positive feedback and the negative feedback mechanism so we will be seeing about this feedback mechanism on the hormonal control so coming to the overview of endocrine system okay now acts with the nervous system to coordinate and integrate the activity of the body cells okay it influences metabolic activity for example thyroxine it is the main hormone for metabolism so the uh, endocrine hormone is influencing the uh, thyroxine uh, i mean uh, thyroxine secretion that is helpful for metabolism metabolic activity okay so responses occur more slowly but tend to last longer okay so what happens the endocrine glands are, are releasing these hormones into the blood stream this blood stream goes uh, to the target organs in the target organs there are cells that cells will have these certain receptors i will show you the receptors in the uh, cell membrane then you will understand so Uh, the endocrine hormone that is going through the blood stream to the target cells through the target cells i'll show you uh, okay uh, what is the function of a hormone okay you know there are different types of hormones steroidal hormone is there amino acid that is protein based hormone is there we will see about in the future slides but what about the functions of the hormones okay you know the hormones are the chemical substance that is playing a major role in your body for example reproduction reproduction uh, you know for uh, reproduction you need to start with sex for sex the oxytocin has to be released then in the female the estrogen and progesterone is needed in male the testosterone is uh, released so likewise for all reproductive activity the hormones are main factors okay then growth and development for example you grow up to 22 years so when you are child the bone is small but the bone and the muscle keeps growing that is by getting the abnormal growth hormone by, by getting the abnormal growth hormone okay then this you know if the growth hormone secretion in the uh, pituitary is not stopped at 22 years then it keeps uh, you keep growing that's what we call it as uh, gigantism okay the patient looks very tall and you know they keep growing for a long time okay then mobilization of body defenses maintaining body water electrolyte and nutrients the kidney you know kidney is the organ that that keeps the required water and electrolytes and nutrients and uh, throw out the remaining uh, excess amount of uh, uh, electrolytes like sodium potassium and all this stuff okay then regulate cell metabolism and energy balance okay i told you the thyroxine is an hormone it is acting as a catalyst during the time of metabolism and energy balance for example you know the insulin is controlling the you get energy that is atp from glucose so this glucose is controlled by the is regulated by the insulin this insulin is secreted in the pancreas in the by the alpha beta cells okay so we will see that so these are the some functions of the uh, endocrine uh, i mean hormone so what is the difference between exocrine and endocrine glands okay no it's very simple the gland that is giving the secretion into the duct you can see the duct here so this is the glandular cells and it is secreting and and the secretions goes through the duct okay so these are all the exocrine gland for example sweat glands sebaceous gland digestive glands like liver okay that is a exocrine gland okay then endocrine gland means the gland that gives the secretion directly into the blood stream the gland that gives the secretion directly into the blood stream we call it as the ex endocrine gland so 
for example all the glands for example pituitary gland pineal gland thyroid gland parathyroid gland adrenal gland pancreas i will show you the locations and all these glands and uh, in the end okay uh, let's fix to this slide now so these are the, uh, endocrine glands okay you know there are some glands which is acting as a exocrine as well as endocrine these kind of glands we call it as heterocrine glands in fact this is not mentioned for example pancreas it is an example of heterocrine gland why because pancreas is secreting insulin that is going into the blood stream to control the blood glucose and the pancreas is secreting pancreatic amylase that is helpful for metabolism of fat in the gi tract okay fat and carbohydrate so so this is the uh, like for example testes the secretion of testosterone is endocrine function production of sperm cells is a exocrine function ovary secretion of progesterone and estrogen is the endocrine function and the production of ovum cell is the exocrine function so these are all the glands we call it as heterocrine gland so you have to understand okay exo the know the difference between endocrine and exocrine okay now location of selected endocrine glands we will see each and every gland just uh, be, uh, blindly you know in the epithalamus we have the pineal gland which is secreting melatonin in then in the anterior aspect we have the hypothalamus i will discuss a lot about the hypothalamus in the central nervous system okay this hypothalamus is connected to the pituitary gland which is the master of all endocrine gland and it is a small peanut shaped gland we will check and see one by one gland don't worry okay then that pituitary gland is connected to the hypothalamus by a pituitary stalk i will show you the anatomical aspect don't worry the location and the pituitary force are cell that are second all you have to know i will teach you extra don't worry then thyroid gland that is present in the, the anterior aspect of the thyroid cartilage then thymus gland so this thymus gland is in fact is absent we cannot say it's absent it becomes redundant okay but in the new one baby the thyroid gland the thymus gland is present from the bifurcation of the trachea till the neck in the newborn baby okay because this thymus gland they produce t lymphocyte cells uh, and uh, it's very big but when the person attains puberty for example females or male this thyroid gland thymus gland it becomes it disappears in fact it becomes redundant okay but only with patients with blood cancer you can see the enlargement of thy thymus gland okay then adrenal gland we also call it a suprarenal gland which is present above in the superior aspect of the kidneys like a crown this pancreas it is present the retroperitoneal space i'll show you don't worry so you have to understand the pancreatic uh, uh, duct uh, mechanism and all this stuff okay then it is producing uh, insulin and glucagon and also somatostatin okay so uh, it, it is also producing the pancreatic amylase that is acting as a exocrine function okay next ovary in the female that is present in the pelvic cavity whereas the testis the male that is present in the scrotal sac so these are all the location of various endocrine glands these are all the location of various endocrine glands okay now coming to the how we are going to understand the physiology of uh, endocrine system this is how okay number one we have to understand is the hypothalamic pituitary control system okay you know in some books you would have studied the pituitary gland that is present in the uh, base of the brain is the peanut shaped gland that is the king of all endocrine glands for example i am the pituitary gland and you are the other endocrine glands okay so if i say stand up you all will stand up if i say sit down you will sit down isn't it so to me there is another boss for example like uh, you can take uh, our head of the department okay she or he is the hypothalamus okay so hypothalamus tells me she tells me some information and i give this uh, order to you okay so she is the hypothalamus i am the pituitary gland and you are all the other endocrine glands understand suppose if my boss is not strong that means what 
I will not be strong. I will not work properly. And if I don't work properly, you don't work on your studies. Understand? This is how you have to understand the endocrine me mechanism. Okay. So ultimately, in the brain, the hypothalamus, that is the part of nervous system, is controlling the pituitary gland. Pituitary gland, in fact, is controlling the other endocrine glands. Okay. That is what we call it as hypothalamic pituitary control system. We will uh, uh, discuss this in a brief. Okay. Then feedback patterns okay for example as i told you uh, if i have uh, one cup of coffee uh, i will start to drink and i my stomach will be full i will say i don't want okay if in case if my stomach is not full if in case if my stomach is not full i will be taking the uh, a one more cup of coffee so that means what the stomach is giving the feedback that yes coffee is enough understand likewise when th insulin is secreted okay so it goes and reduces the blood sugar level then the low blood sugar level will order the pancreas gland to stop secreting the insulin understand so this is what feedback mechanism you have two types of feedback positive feedback and negative feedback we will discuss this in future slides okay then hormone receptors okay this receptors i'll show you the picture in the uh, diagram then i will tell you how what is the receptor on the cell membrane how they catch this epinephrine or insulin and send them inside this cell this is what you have to understand here okay then cellular responses okay so uh, when the hormone is uh, secreted what is the response in the cell for example the uh, uh, um, ovulation is taking place on the 14th day ovulation is taking place on the 14th day so that time uh, the, till the time the estrogen keeps secreting 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 and once the progesterone starts to secrete the ovum cell from the ovary it comes out and uh, these are all the cellular response to the hormones these are all the cellular response to the hormones okay then modulation of target cell response and the endocrine pathologies so you know what uh, if the you know anything excess is not good anything is very less is not good so it has to be normal level okay so we will see for each and every gland what will happen if it is more secretion if there is less secretions we will discuss okay the pathological aspect of endocrine glands and how the presentation will be okay coming to the chemical structure of a hormone chemical structure of a hormone you see as i told you the hormones that are secreted by the endocrine glands see note remember this the substance that is secreted by endocrine glands we call it as hormones the substance that is secreted by exocrine gland we call it as enzymes okay you have to keep this in mind these are all simple questions so difference between hormone and enzyme enzymes are secreted by exocrine gland and hormones are secreted by the endocrine glands enzymes are released in the ducts i mean the tubes whereas the hormones are directly released into the blood stream okay this hormone itself is of two type one is the steroid type other is the protein type amino acid is protein isn't it okay so amino acid type and steroid type okay for example the estrogen aldosterone cortisol progesterone testosterone all these are steroid based hormones okay all these are steroid based hormones especially pharmacology students suppose uh, if there is a severe inflammatory process you control the inflammatory process by injecting steroids in the patients isn't it so naturally the body is releasing the glucocorticoids and mineralocorticoids understand likewise uh, protein based for example insulin this is a 50 64 amino acid okay then glycoproteins like follicle stimulating hormone luteinizing hormone thyroid stimulating hormone human chorionic gonadotrophin okay so these are all the glycoprotein type okay then this uh, peptide types are 
this anti diuretic hormone oxytocin melanocyte stimulating hormone then uh, uh, thyroid releasing hormone and growth releasing hormone so th uh, these are all the hormones that are peptide types so just for your understanding imagine uh, remember this is amino acid type that is protein type and steroid type colors okay this is enough so then the thyroxine derivatives the epinephrine or epinephrine Mm, uh, dopamine and thyroxine these are all the tyrosine derivatives that is also a type of protein so uh, overall there is protein type as well as steroid type these are all the two types of hormones let's speak about steroidal hormones okay so steroidal hormones are synthesis in gonads and the adrenal gland gonads are nothing but the sex glands like testes and ovary and also adrenal gland so adrenal gland itself we divide into cortex and medulla in the cortex also we have divided into zona uh, uh, reticularis zona fasciculata zona so like there are three we, i will show you okay then in that place you have this uh, glucocorticoids and mineralocorticoids so this is the steroidal based hormone okay synthesis from cholesterol as required so if for example for any hormones to be produced you need cholesterol don't think what you uh, you eat, eat cholesterol is uh, very bad for health you know cholesterol is very important for health to produce more energy in, during the time of demand and also to say, produce more hormones okay then permeable to the uh, cell membrane that means what it can penetrate through the cell membrane okay and receptors are located uh, inside cell in cytoplasm i will show you in the next slide receptor means what these are the uh, structures that catches these hormones and utilize them okay not soluble in plasma okay they are not soluble in plasma but when they go inside the cell they will be soluble and they will be utilized so you can see the chemical structure of these hormones the cortisols aldosterones testosterones estradiol cholesterol these are all the chemical structure of various hormones okay then coming to the norm non steroidal hormone that is the protein based it is amino acid based under amino acid protein peptide and glycoprotein okay these are impermeable to cell membrane and therefore binds to receptors bound to cell membrane they are not they cannot penetrate inside the cell but they want to go inside inside the cell so there are some attaching uh, structures we call it as the receptors i'll show you in the next uh, slide okay and these hormones are soluble in plasma okay then hormones act through second messengers or by activating genes how do the hormones work this is what you have to understand okay these hormones will change the plasma per membrane permeability that is cell membrane permeability okay or membrane potential and it can open or close the ion channel so that so more sodium and potassium go in and come out then stimulate production of proteins in the cell okay then stimulate mitosis that is the cell multiplication activate and deactivate enzymes okay for example in the duodenum the brunner's gland uh, is present that is a uh, endocrine gland that's an example of endocrine gland the brunner's gland so when the uh, enzyme level is more then the brunner's gland will deactivate the secretions okay the brunner's gland activation will be reduced okay so this is how the hormones are acting okay it can also increase the secretion for example the cholecystokinin will uh, make the digestive tract to secrete the uh, enzymes in the gi tract okay so likewise there are many uh, functions how does hormone communicate with the target cells okay so Uh, communication when you speak about communication uh, first of all the hormone should identify the target cells okay let me give one example see for example insulin is released by the beta cells in the pancreas okay this insulin should be roaming in the blood and it should be it should go and stick to the receptor insulin receptors on the cell membrane then only it can go into the cell 
okay so now the once insulin goes inside the cell then means what the insulin uh, the body is able to produce atp okay so that is means what the insulin have formed the target cells insulin have formed the target cells okay so as i told you first of all you have uh, to understand that there are water soluble hormones that can be dissolved in the water and lipid soluble hormones that can be dissolved only by the lipids only by the cholesterol so okay example the steroid and the thyroid hormones okay so we will see that as i told you this what uh, the structure picture what you see is here is a cell membrane this is a cell membrane this is a place the cytoplasm place this is the extracellular space okay if you see here the cell membrane the cell membrane is made up of biphospholipid layer this is the lipid and this is two phosphate molecule and in between this biphospholipid molecule there are receptors these are the receptors so when the insulin is roaming out this receptors will catch this hormone and send them inside okay likewise more number of receptors are present for epinephrine and norepinephrine that's why within a second once adrenaline is released more amount of energy is produced by because of presence of more number of receptors okay so this is what you have to understand here then once the hormone comes inside then they go in for metabolism metabolic activity mainly the cyclic uh, amp pathway okay camp that is cyclic amp pathway so then uh, this uh, <coughs> cyclic amp pathway is a big pathway you will study this in especially in biochemistry okay this will be a separate topic for you uh, that how the hormone once it reaches enters inside the cell how the metabolism is taking place by the cyclic amp pathway okay so then uh, let's not go into biochemistry let's uh, okay then types of messengers okay now there is something called hydrophobic hydrophilic and gaseous messengers for example hydrophobic means once the hormone sees a water molecule it will run away from that that is what we called as hydrophobic action okay hydro this uh, this uh, these are the lipid uh, soluble hormones for, for example hydrophilic uh, uh, mechanism means that means what once the hormone sees the water molecule it goes and stick to that okay so in this hydrophilic mechanism only the hormones are working in cyclic amp pathway cyclic gmp pathway ip3 and calcium ca pathways okay then gases means once they see the h2s no and co gases they go on and attach to that okay so these are all the three types of messengers you have to uh, understand so coming to the endocrine system second messengers most hormones seem to use cyclic amp pathways uh, but uh, several uh, use inositol triphosphate as a second messenger okay second messenger system operates more quickly than steroidal response and amplify those response to hormone or receptor binding okay so mainly when you study about the cyclic amp pathway in biochemistry you will understand how the secondary messenger system is working so intercellular receptors and direct gene activations as i told you these are the uh, cell membrane so this is a nucleus okay and this is a cell membrane so what happens once the hormone comes inside in the cyclic amp uh, pathway the receptors attached it to the nucleus and then they go in for gene activation in the nucleus you know the dna is present in the nucleus okay so the g the hormones are doing this gene activation once they go inside the cell and then thereby the result is coming for example uh, anything like growth hormone cell divisions or uh, uh, metabolic activity to produce this uh, atp uh, many thing many thing okay so these are all the this is how the hormones are acting okay now how this hormone release uh, are controlled okay for example uh, more amount of thyroxine secretion uh, is not good okay so those people will be displaying different types of uh, uh, 
uh, response for example sex hormone if the sex hormone is secreting too much in the body what will happen this kind of guys will be rapists they will rape all the females okay so for example growth if more amount of growth hormones release they will grow 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 they will keep they will keep on growing okay so the control that is if the uh, hormone is absent then also it's a problem if the hormone is secreting uh, secreted in excess amount then also it is a big problem then also it is a big problem okay so what you have to understand here is the control of this hormones okay so as i told you feedback mechanism then endocrine gland stimulation and nervous system control these are the three mechanism that the secretion that is the release of hormones by the endocrine glands are done so we will see that uh, one by one so coming to the uh, feedback mechanism there is positive feedback as well as negative feedback there is positive feedback as well as negative feedback for example the endocrine cells release hormone that comes to the target cells and the cells will give the response okay once the response is done then the the message goes to the endocrine cells okay the work is done endocrine gland you can stop secreting this is the negative feedback mechanism so for example if you see the uh, negative feedback mechanism as i told you with the pancreas that is producing insulin you know in, in the pancreas the beta cells are present they produce this insulin okay so insulin comes to the uh, blood stream and it reaches the liver and muscle cells so there is a place where the glucose from the plasma i mean blood uh, serum is utilized and that glucose is converted into atp once uh, adequate amount of energy is uh, set is received then immediately the beta cells will stop producing the insulin so this is a that is reduce glucose level inhibit the release of insulin okay so you can see this for example if some patients diabetic patients inject more amount of insulin they go for hypoglycemic shock that means what shock due to low blood glucose level and they faint okay so this is the uh, mechanism that is controlled by the pancreas so pancreas automatically understand that there is less blood sugar level so i have to stop secreting insulin okay this is a negative feedback mechanism there is something called positive feedback mechanism there is something called as positive feedback me mechanism you know in the posterior pituitary pituitary we divide in, into anterior middle and uh, posterior or uh, it's uh, i will teach you in pituitary gland okay so the positive feedback mechanism if you see the pituitary gland posterior pituitary gland will release oxytocin during the time of Uh, delivery so exactly at the ninth month uh, the delivery will start okay that time the oxytocin will be released from the posterior pituitary this oxytocin will go into the blood stream and start make the uterine muscles to contract that time the labor pain will start okay so this uh, uterine contraction once the baby is uh, uh, delivered out okay then the Uh, uterine has to contract more more and more this is called as perpurium period okay so the stretch receptors in the uterus will reduce and then make the posterior pituitary to reduce the oxytocin secretion reduce the oxytocin secretion so in case if the oxytocin is not released uh, by the posterior pituitary at the 9th month then we inject it we call the pitocin induction of labor isn't it we inject the oxytocin artificial oxytocin and make the uterus to contract make the uterus to contract so this mechanism is called as positive feedback mechanism okay as i told you uh, types of uh, gland stimulus stimulations uh, gland stimulations can be uh, gland can be uh, fun secreting the hormones by the humoral stimulation that is the concentration of the calcium that is present in the blood stream the nervous stimulations and also hormonal stimulation okay so nervous stimulation for example if you see the uh, uh, 
uh, spinal cord will is giving the uh, signal to the adrenal gland to secrete the adrenal hormones okay whereas hormonal control you see the hypothalamus is secreting the hormones and that hormone reaches the anterior pituitary and makes the anterior pituitary to secrete okay for example thyroid stimulating hormone is secreted by thyroid anterior pituitary that thyroid stimulating hormone comes and kicks the thyroid gland to make t3 t4 that is thy triiodothyronine tetraiodothyronine hormones okay but thyroid stimulating hormone releasing hormone is secreted by hypothalamus note down my word okay thyroid stimulating hormone releasing hormone is secreted in the hypothalamus that comes through the blood vessels to the anterior pituitary this anterior pituitary will release that thyroid stimulating hormone once that uh, hypothalamus hormone comes and this thyroid stimulating hormone goes in the blood and kicks the thyroid thyroid gland cells and make them to secrete t3 and t4 triiodothyronine and tetraiodothyronine so when you check the thyroid gland hormone level you have to check the tsh level t3 level and t4 level if the tsh level is less both this t3 and t4 will be less that means problem is in the pituitary gland if tsh level is normal only the t3 t4 level is high that means what only the problem is with the thyroid gland okay so this is how you have to go do group of test and see find out where the pathology is where the pathology is so this is what we call the hormonal stimulation of the uh, glands okay this mechanism is called as hormonal stimulation okay so three types of stimuli causes hormone release as i told you hypothalamus releases corticotropin like you know i have given you the examples before okay so cell response to hormone if they have a receptor for the hormone if they have a receptor for the hormone so here what you have to understand is the you have to understand the factors crucial for target cell activation you have to understand the factors that is uh, very important for the target cells okay one is hormone level in the body okay suppose if the body needs uh, 10 mg of uh, 10 ml of uh, thyroxine if uh, that means what it's a normal level for example so if only 2 ml of thyroxine is secreted the level is less then also the target cells will not receive adequate amount of hormone stimulation okay the number of receptors on the target uh, cells for example as i told you in the skin i mean in cell membrane only there are receptors so what happens in uh, uh, diabetic and uh, insulin dependent diabetes and non insulin dependent diabetes in insulin dependent diabetes the pancreas is not secreting the insulin so we are manually injecting the insulin that goes and works in non insulin dependent uh, diabetes the insulin level will be normal but the receptors on the cell membrane is sleeping so we have to give oral anti diabetic medications and wake this receptors on the cell membrane so that it catches the insulin and uh, so this uh, this type of diabetes is called as non insulin dependent diabetes so that's what the receptor function is also very important for the uh, function of the hormones okay then strength of binding between hormone and the receptors this is also one important factor okay next uh, Uh, as far as endocrine receptors are concerned you have two type one is up regulation and down regulations we will see that okay now half life onset and duration of hormone activity the concentration of hormones in the blood reflects the rate of release speed of inactivation and removal from the body the length of the time for hormone blood level to decrease by half it's called half life the half life and the time the hormone takes to have an effect depends on solubility in water and or lipids okay so uh, coming to storage and secretion of the hormones okay you know what uh, some hormones they give the some glands endocrine glands they secrete the hormones and they 
स्टोर इन साइड द हारमोन एंड इंक्रीज द कॉन्सेंट्रेशन ऑफ स्टोर इन साइड द ग्लैंड वी कॉल इट एस वेसाइकल्स कोलाइडल वेसाइकल्स एंड दे आर द कॉन्सेंट्रेशन ऑफ दि सिक्रेशन इज इंक्रीज ओके सो एक्चुअली फॉर एंडोक्रीन ग्लैंड there is no like uh, sac for example in exocrine gland of the liver gall bladder pouch is the sac which stores the liver secretion likewise for a, uh, endocrine gland there is no such place there is no such anatomical structure to store the secretions to store the secretion this is what you have to understand okay so for example noradrenaline which is also called as norepinephrine and adrenaline which is also called as epinephrine from the adrenal medulla released within seconds after stimulus okay as i told you this is a hormone of fight and flight uh, you see a snakes and suddenly you wake up and you run away so immediately more amount of energy is produced so you don't think about fasting and you don't say that uh, i am tired but you will run so during that time the enormous amount of energy is produced by Uh, the release of adrenaline and noradrenaline okay then triiodothyronine and t- tetraiodothyronine that is t3 and t4 release by the uh, thyroid gland that is present in the neck and the effects evident in hours days and for weeks so the hormone will act for uh, long duration okay so uh, hormone metabolism and excretion okay so you know only by the process of metabolism the hormones are produced only by the process of metabolism the hormones are produced so what is that uh, metabolism what is that metabolism okay now if you see the liver and the kidney uh, uh, the, <coughs> the peptide hormones and catecholamines rapidly removed from the blood the steroid and thyroid hormones are removed more slowly whereas metabolism to more active active molecules in target organs okay if you see here the endocrine cell the endocrine gland secretes a hormone that goes into the plasma so some har- hormones are re- released i mean excreted some hormones are inactivated and uh, some hormones are activated by metabolism then catalysis also taking place and then reaching the target cells okay so what happens uh, once either the hormones are inactivated or it is excreted by the kidney this is what you have to understand either the hormones are inactivated or excreted by the kidney so this is what you have to understand the hormonal metabolism and excretion this is a big mechanism like you know once they are roaming in the plasma of the blood they reach the target cells and it is utilized so once the action is done the excess hormones are inactivated or it is kidney filtered by the kidney and the gall bladder or i mean the liver also okay then uh, let's go to the endocrine uh, system 